So a, a favorite experience, I call it, with a student um, who was struggling is last year I had a matric come to my class who for their grade 11 mark had got 56% for English. Um, and in fact, uh, for one of the terms, she got 49%. So she failed to technically one of the terms. So I sort of was going, oh, this, this is going to be, it's going to be hard to get the student ready for the trick. But there's nothing better, it doesn't matter how, what their sort of ability is in the subject, there's nothing better than a student that just wants to improve. Um, and just an authentic desire to learn. And she was just ready to improve her mark. And she was just so ready to, to, to do better than she, what she was used to. And so she asked really good questions. And, and throughout lockdown, we were worried about lockdown because I was worried about how she was going to do. But we had Zoom lessons every second day. And we really focused on specific things she was struggling with. And um, because I love my job and passionate, because she was passionate about learning it, it just went so well. And it just clicked. And um, I think... I think it led to then the proudest moment of what is a relatively short teaching career in, in matric, she got 75% for, for English. And that was just, you know, to, to so what, she went up by 19%, she went from 46 to, to 75. And, um, yeah, uh, I mean, that's pretty close to what I got for English. So uh, that was just, to see that pay off for her, and just be able to go, because forget, forget English in my subject, what a lesson that is for her, that she can, she can do whatever she wants in life, if she puts her mind to it, and she's willing to give the time and energy, that she was in the, in the mid-50s, having failed one of the terms of grade 11, and a year later, got, came this close to a distinction. You know, I, I think, what else could come her way in life, that she struggles with at first, that she won't believe she can get better at? Um, so yeah, that was really cool to see. And also I think good for me to see that a student who for four years gets a certain mark, that isn't who they are in terms of their ability in the subject, that, that they can do better. Um, and yeah, that's been, that's, I've been riding that high for a while. Advice for learners. Learners, talk to your teacher. I'm not even just talking about asking questions. If you're struggling, say so. Um, if... if you know, I always say to my classes, like my grade 10s this year, I set them some pages to read. And we got to the lesson, and we were talking about it, and we were discussing those, those chapters of the novel, and I started to pick up on that hardly any of them were contributing, or able to contribute, even those basic, like, plot questions. And I started to say, who's actually read these? And hardly anyone put up their hand. And I said, why? Talk to me. Is it that you're lazy, or is it that, you know, you had a bunch of tests on, or that you have other things in your life? I want my kids to have a social life. If they've got a bunch of tests up, then I don't need to set them reading homework. We can wait till next week. And then now they talk to me, and now if I say, okay, guys, do these chapters, and someone goes, sir, is it okay if we maybe do one chapter fewer, you know? And then I'm like, no problem. If that is always the case, then no, we're going to need to find out a common ground. But, but I found that the students um, understand that they can't always, uh, they, there's got to be a line somewhere. But just if, 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 if a learner buys into that this is their time, and that this is their learning experience, and that I'm not just carrying all the heavy uh, material here, that they need to meet me, you know, 40% of the way. I'll meet them 60%, but I can't go further than that. And if they meet me there, not only does it make the, the uh, teacher's job significantly easier, but it makes the learner's experience so much better that they now have control over their own studying, which is what all any learner ever wants, um, to feel like they are... are having a role to play in their education, no matter what age they are. Um, so talk to your teacher. Um, and teachers, to that point, create multiple avenues of communication then. So in my classroom, I always say, first prize, come talk to me in person at a break or after class. Make a time with me. Email me and say, so can we meet? If you're too shy, there's a box in my classroom where they can write something on a piece of paper and put it in there, either with their name or not. And then I can re I check the box at the end of each day, and it can be something as simple as sometimes it's just encouraging me on something I've been doing, or it can be like, sir, I didn't get this in class, I was too shy to ask, can you repeat it in class tomorrow? And then the third option is that they email me, and then I can, I can respond to that. Um, so create multiple avenues for your kids to contact you and communicate with you, so that they, because some kids feel comfortable asking questions in class, some feel comfortable talking to you directly, and some don't. So you need to create 
different ways for students to, to reach out to you. Um, but yeah, learners, talk to your teacher. Tell them where you're at so that they know how to adjust their teaching and, and you have a better experience. So I think I was standing out here and there's a whole bunch of chestnut trees and I was sending a message to a student um, and just encouraging them and you know, this particular student had, was, was very high achieving, was a leader in the classroom and, um, but just like any, any teenager was, was still trying to find out who they were and what kind of person they wanted to be and I was getting the sense that um, they, they were maybe at times trying to, to be someone that they, that they just weren't designed to be or that they weren't meant to be and I want to encourage them that the person that they were meant to be was good enough and that that person and that they should embrace that um, and I think the, the example that I used was I was, just, I was out here so I just looked at the chestnut trees and I said um, I, I pointed at the chestnut tree and I said if this chestnut tree tried to go up to be an acorn tree it would be a very bad acorn tree it would have the worst acorns ever and it wouldn't look like the other uh, the, the other acorn trees and it wouldn't it wouldn't be a very good acorn tree and that would be a missed opportunity um, because it would live its whole life thinking it was bad at what it thought it was if it had rather embraced the fact that it was a chestnut tree and then focus on being the best chestnut tree it could be well then it could be an amazing chestnut tree and then it's 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 pos its potential you know increases uh, exponentially so I was encouraging him to, to embrace who he was because who he was was more than good enough and that um, he will never be as good if he tries to, uh, uh, as good a person as he can be if he tries to be anyone else. Um, so just to live in that truth of who he is and, and to live it confidently and embrace it, I think is what my message was to him. My lessons change and adapt according to the people in the room. So just because a lesson works, and I learned this the hard way. <laughs> you have a good lesson, you're like, okay, cool. So that works, I'll just do that every time. But, but, you know, it's not the space, it's not the content that makes a lesson successful. It's how are you you're getting it across to the people receiving it. And I learned that you, know, you can take the exact same lesson plan, the exact same style and approach and methodology change the people, even change one or two kids in the classroom, and you have a whole different lesson. So it's hard to get up here and just go, let me do a, a quick example of a lesson to an empty room, because I, I feed off who, who they are. And that's why I found online teaching so difficult in lockdown, because you're teaching to a screen, and you're not getting that feedback, and I'm not then able to adjust accordingly how the lesson needs to be. So, you know, you know, you spoke with Robbie Williams earlier. Sometimes in a, with certain classes, I get up on the, on the desk. You know, if I'm teaching Hamlet and it's the scene with the ghost, the ghost is hovering. So when I read the ghost lines, I stand on the desk and I read the ghost lines and I move from desk to desk as I, as I read it. But that's going to work with every matric class that I'll ever have. Some will look at that and go, what is he doing? Uh, and, not, and they won't work for them. So, it, you know, you've got to adjust it um, according to who's in front of you. So it's hard just to do an example lesson um, to an empty class. But I think that's an important lesson for maybe a new teacher or, or, or um, someone considering to be a teacher, that it's, it's the people that comes first, the students, not the content or the teaching plan. And you need to adjust according to who's in the room. I still go and observe other teachers. If I'm free, um, you know, my internship year, obviously I had to observe people, but even now I'm a, I'm a full-time teacher and if I'm free and I know there's someone teaching, I'll go ask, can I just observe your lesson? Because, you, you know, as a teacher, you always have to be learning. And so I can't think of a, of a line or like a, or a motivational quote that someone gave me, but just I've watched certain teachers countless times, teachers that I've gone, this is the kind of teacher I want to be, but it's not even... You know, every teacher is unique. So I watch some teachers and I go, they do that really well. I'm going to take that on board into my teaching. I, it's not that they do that poorly, but that's not how I would do it. So I'm not going to take that. But go watch a range of teachers. And I've watched, there are certain teachers at, at my school that I go, that's the kind of teacher or that's the way I want to teach. And so I go watch them regularly and I, I learn from them and I absorb what they do and I take everything in. Um, and I'm maybe even learning more than the kids are in the room. 
and then I can go back to my class and I can start implementing some of those things. So there's no, there's no line or motivational quote, but just um, I've learned from mentors by watching them teach. Um, and I still do today, and I hope that I will always do that. That one day I'll be 55 years old and I'll be sitting in a classroom with a younger teacher teaching and learning from them. I hope that happens one day. That most of teaching isn't teaching. That most of teaching is preparing lessons and marking, especially in a subject like English, and um, you know, reflecting on lessons and, and meetings and admin and, it, you know, uh, I, when I'm in the classroom I'm teaching, that's obviously when I'm at my happiest in terms of my job, but it's not the majority of my, of my work. And so I think um, parents can sometimes forget that, um, that, that that's the case and, and just assume that I just only am in the classroom, you know, just throwing out knowledge that I just have this infinite amount of. Um, and, and students can forget that not only do I teach them, but I teach usually four other classes and I have to mark all their work as well. And not only that, but I need to spend time with my wife and I need to take my dog for a walk. And now and then if I'm lucky, I can see friends. So I think um, just, just to let that, to realize that, that when, when, you, when you criticize a teacher or when you, when you, if they're doing what they should be doing, that when they do something in a class that wasn't just something that came to them in that moment, that, that was planned and that was thought through and that was something that they really wanted to work. And if it doesn't work, to be gentle with them in that moment and, and it, to let them know that it didn't work, a student should, should go, so I, I, that didn't quite work for me, that's good, that needs to happen. But don't, don't go about it as if you know, that teacher wanted that to be the outcome. I, I know not every teacher in the world is a good teacher. But I don't think there's anyone who goes into a classroom wanting that lesson to be bad. Um, so, so be considerate of the fact that um, most of our time is actually spent outside of the classroom on other things. Um, and we're not just permanently you know, waiting at our desk for people to come. If a student does really well in my class, if they write, you know, last year um, my grade nines wrote uh, some poems and we all voted for them, and the kids that got the most votes, I let their parents know, and I said, your, here's the poem, because I know kids don't always share things with their parents, I said, here's the poem your child wrote. It's really amazing, and their class thought it was amazing as well, congratulate them at the dinner table, uh, and bring it up and ask them to recite it. Um, and also, if there's a kid that's struggling that I'm worried about, I also let the parents know and I ask for a phone call conversation and that we all can partner in this together. Um, and I will do most of the heavy lifting, but I can't do it all. And um, it's just so much more beneficial for the students if everyone does their part. Uh, and, and really, the, only, the, the biggest part that, that students and parents need to play is communication the biggest one and I know where a kid's at now even something like if a, if a kid does badly in a test but before the test was written I was told that they're in a really bad space things are bad at home they went through this terrible experience and I can I can approach that test with that understanding and then we can find something that works for that kid now the student who completely bombed in a listening comprehension in my first year and usually that student is an A student and they just bombed but before I had, I had found out that they went through a really difficult moment the day before. So then that made sense. So then I, I managed to, to speak to the school and we, we didn't count that assessment because that's not fair on the kid. But if they hadn't communicated that to me, they would, that mark would have stood. So just to understand that we're all human beings, we're all trying to figure this out and we're just trying to get it to work the best way it can. But, but the best way it can work is if we all talk and we all communicate to each other.